ArtSpark Texas presents Art Collage with Victoria Eagle Bear. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Um, we're going to discuss the healing properties of art collage making. Um, I'm Victoria Eagle Bear and I'm really excited to be, be here with you. So for what we're going to talk about today, um, you can go ahead and look on the screen. Well, we're going to talk about what, what art collage is. We're going to go over the art materials that you would have received in your box, or if you haven't, materials that you can easily purchase. Um, we're going to go over a few art collage artist examples and kind of talk about their history and what the collage making meant to them. We're going to work uh, together on creating a collage. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how you can make collage making a creative practice, um, which creates healing benefits uh, in your life. Okay, so this is a quote um, that I really like. It resonates with me and talks about collage. Uh, the really thing to take away from this is that collage, you can take things from everyday life. You can take um, all types of items, but basically it's a way of creating um, a composition from fragments that you, that you, fragments of images that you like. And it's just a way of breaking apart to create a, a composition and coming together in a way of self-expression. So that's my takeaway from this. And you're going to see this same uh, author uh, throughout the presentation a few times. Next, what is collage? This is really just a textbook definition of what collage is. But overall, it's where you combine images to create a new composition that conveys emotion. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this. But one thing I will say here is one form of collage that you might be um, pretty, pretty aware of already is our vision boards. People create vision boards annually, and it's a way to set the intention for the year. Um, and its collage is a little bit more involved in that you have lots of layering. You can get really detailed with the cuts that you make for your images. There's different uh, techniques that as you do this, you'll become comfortable with. Um, as an example, um, with collage, you're provided with scissors that you have in your box. But one uh, tip that I'll give you is if you want to get really detailed in cutting your images, um, you can use an exacto blade. Here's an example of one that I have. We, it's Be careful it's a safe, for a safety issue, but you can get some really nice clean cuts and um, create really detailed and layered work. Another thing you can do um, is, if you're comfortable, you can tear images with your fingers. Um, you're also provided with a foam brush. You don't have to use that foam brush. I, I use the glue with my fingers, but it just depends on how comfortable you are with getting a little, a little dirty as you're creating. So, okay, next, um, we're gonna talk about, a little bit about my background. Um, I'm, I'm an Army veteran. Uh, I served four, five years, excuse me, as an Army officer. Um, but I'm an unlikely soldier, and I say that because I have an art background. I had it, I've been creating in some capacity since I was a kid. I started painting when I was in high school, and I found collage in college. Collage is really appealing to me because you can find, use all different types of images. You can use magazines, you can use the um, advertisements you get in the mail, you can find things you find of daily life, you know, discarded candy wrappers, um, infused images, all types of things. And I will get more into that later. But being an unlikely soldier is, it took a lot for me to transition into the military lifestyle. It also took a lot to me for me to transition out. So um, the top image there, that is an example of a partially completed vision board that I did a few years ago. Um, it is also on a canvas panel, which is, which is what you have in your box today. The second image was also done on a canvas panel, and I had a little bit more time to work on this, so I painted the background. Um, but the images you see there were cut out using an X-Acto knife, and you can see you can get very, very detailed cuts. You can layer quickly. Um, this part is hard because you can layer, you can pull up the image, slide an image in it underneath it, and just play with it till you like the aesthetic. Um, but all of these are using the Mod Podge glue that you have. Um, being so, I keep saying I'm a little likely soldier, but being in the military, trying to use that creative expression is challenging. So I utilized collage 
to help me as I transitioned back out of the military to um, express things that I had personally been through. Um, I'm sure all of us have experienced just being females in the military some really challenging times. So it's a way to express how you feel, whether it's an emotion, whether it's a depiction of an event, or whether it's just finding images that have color, texture, shapes that either evoke that emotion that you're feeling or bring you peace. Um, and so what I say all this because I want you to be patient with yourself. Collage is a very freeing activity. There's really no rules. There's no right or wrong. It's just a matter of self-expression. So I encourage you to just let, let go during this activity. Let your heart and mind lead you and just be curious. Um, and okay, so we're gonna go ahead and give you a little bit more information now. So this slide really just outlines what you have in your art box. Um, magazine clippings are the main thing that we, we can use to create your collage. Um, you may only have one magazine, but I encourage you to go to your local thrift store to half price books, yard sales, you'll find magazines, you'll find all kinds of, you know, um, uh, journals, things like that, that you can use to find your inspiration. The canvas panel is a base. Um, we're using that rather than paper because you can really build up your work and it creates the, um, a art collage that will last quite some time. You have colored tissue paper. I provided that because we don't have time to paint the background today, but when you're doing this on your own, you can absolutely paint your background. You would, this tissue paper, you would apply the same way you will um, your images. Um, and one, one tip is if you want to get some texture, you can crinkle it up and then reopen it and then apply it and you'll have some background texture. Um, the Mod Podge glue is a specific glue that I highly recommend for collage making. You should have a small bottle in your box. And the reason being is other glues like Almer's glue, um, just different types of glue, a little bit too tacky. This is, it really flows well. You can use it with your fingers. Um, it just glides well and it creates a nice thin layer. And I'll, I'll give some more direction, but it also is a sealant and it dries clear. So it's really helpful for protecting your collage. Um, I provided you with this foam brush. Um, the foam brush really helps um, when you are applying your images, but one thing to be thoughtful of is if you let it dry, it gets hard. Um, so just be careful when you're done, be carefully rinse it and then let it air dry. But I also welcome you, if you're okay with getting dirty, you don't even need the brush. You can just apply things with your hands, but they, you will get your hands kind of tacky. Um, and the scissors have been provided as well. But as again, as I mentioned, if you want to purchase an exacto knife and carefully cut, you can do that as well. If you do do that, I recommend you having a, um, you know, I have one right here, having some sort of backing to where you're cutting. If you're cutting on your table, you have some sort of protective mat to where you're cutting with the exacto blade on here, as opposed to placing your artboard and cutting directly on your table, your surface. Okay. Now, this is our schedule. These are some list of activities, but also instructions for the work. The theme that I'd like to put as an intention for our time together is healing. That is, you know, we can explore what that looks for you, whether it's getting over, not getting over, working through and processing something that you've been through, um, reflecting on an emotion um, that, and for me, Collage making has really been a way to convey and get things out of my heart and mind onto a piece of art. Um, and it's a way to express yourself and things that you've been through when words are not adequate, at least conversations or even writing it down. So think about, as we go through, think about what that looks for you, what healing works for you, or if that, if you know, that doesn't make sense for you right now, pick a, pick a sub subject or just go with it. Um, and we'll talk more about that. But the first activity is as we go through, please go ahead and start looking at your magazines now. Please start finding some images uh, or color, texture, or words that appeal to you and start cutting them out. The second step is as you start to cut out um, some clippings, you're gonna go ahead and group them. You're gonna group them by light color. You can group them by, the, by images, by words, by shapes. Um, really, there's no right or wrong with this. You just group them in, in sets that make sense to you. And the reason for that is it's easier to pull from those groups as opposed to having a mass of unrelated images. But again, work in the way that makes sense for you. Next, you're gonna take those images and start arranging them on the panel. There's a couple different things. You can 
think about the composition that you want to make. Sometimes we can have it in our head. Um, you can draw it out on a piece of paper, you know, in, in just kind of the way that it makes sense for you. Or you can just go for it. I often find that if I have a feeling or I um, just find an image that I like, often I'll find one, put it on there, start looking, and I'll find another. And you can just kind of build that way, kind of like stream of consciousness. You just let your heart and mind guide you. Um, either way is fine. Eventually, eventually we'll find our own way of working, but just there's no judgment, there's no rules. So just take your time. Lastly, um, and we won't get, to, we likely won't get to this today, um, but when you're completely done with your collage, you can use your foam brush or a paintbrush, however you'd like, and apply a thin layer of the Mod Podge glue all over your composition. Then you let that sit um, because you need time to let that dry. Once it dries, it's not going to be tacky to the touch. It will dry clear and it'll be a sealant for your work. Okay, now we're going to talk about uh, a few artists that were really prominent and um, are known for being collage making artists. The two, first two artists I'm going to talk about um, were both from the Dada, the, Dada, the Dada art movement in Berlin. Um, this first artist was attributed to being the, the father of um, collage making. There's other artists that are attributed with that as well. One of them is Pablo Picasso. But but this artist actually, um, what I love about his work is he would put, pull things from everyday life. He'd walk around the streets of Berlin, pick up pieces of discarded wood, cork, um, string, metal, you name it. He would find things and collect them. And then he created a collage, as you can see here. It's not all paper. Um, there are pieces of wood in there. I think I see some metal, um, all types of stuff. And he, he would apply paint, he would apply, you know, potentially some um, colored, colored or printed paper. And it's just a great example of connecting reality and creating an abstract work of art. But this is meaningful to him as a reflection of the world that he lived in in the 1920s. The next artist we have here is Hannah Hoke. She is a female Dada, Dada artist. Um, this was created in 1931. She was also in Berlin. She is accredited with being a pioneer of photo montage. What she did um, is she found images in fashion magazines, illustrated journals, po other popular magazines, and she would create a commentary on the life around her. She was, like I said, the only female in the, this Dada group. So she poked fun at the way of life. She poked fun of aspects of misogyny because back then she probably um, did not have the same freedoms that a lot of her male counterparts did. So she used this as a commentary on what she was going through in the world around her. So a lot of these are com com they're complex. There's a lot to them as far as the thought, the emotions behind it, but they are, are kind of a satire on the life at that time, especially a life as a woman. So I, I really, really enjoy her work. And at the end of the presentation, I'll include all my references if you want to look up these artists um, further. OK, so this slide, I really wanted to show you how collage can be a commentary on the social tumultuous times that we live in. The collage on the left is, was created in 1970 by Robert Rauschenberg. It's called Signs. And that he utilized pictures from a political figures, not political, excuse me, popular figures during that time. Some of them might be um, political leaders. Um, there's, you know, signs to military and the the um, the, the political. I'm mean, sorry, the military activity during that time, and it just um, is an observation. It's a pretty bold collage, but it's a good example of how you can use collage to comment on um, what's going on socially and in the world around you. The next one on the right, this was created in 2008. It's a collage on the Iraq war. And it's not, it looks like it's only two images collaged together, but it's a striking, um, invokes st striking emotion on how the warfare impacts civilians, how it makes you feel, the loss, the um, 
the struggle that we have, but they really capture the spirit of the times. This is um, Pavel Zobak. He is the same person I had that had the um, quote in the beginning, but he is really adept at capturing what collage does, the emotions it evokes, and how, you know, you can create a new world with collage, literally constructed from pieces of things that you find in the world around you. And what's really nice is this one, especially the one on the right to me, creates a relationship with the viewer and the work. You're kind of drawn into that emotion. Um, and your work can be cathartic for you, but it also can really captivate um, people that, that can see it. Okay, so the next two artists are modern day artists. This first one, Lance Lesher, he is from Austin, Texas. This specific work was created in 2009. Title is How to Draw with Paint. And what I love about his work is he himself has experienced a lot of tra trauma, grief. Um, if you read a little bit about him, he kind of talks about um, his personal experiences and how he used collage as a way of painting. He used collage to um, just really navigate the chaos that he was going on, going on through his life. Um, and he was able to find, um, be at ease based off of through this creation. And if you look at it, uh, it's very multi-layered. There's all types of image in there. And when I look at it, I see a lot of happy images. There's a lot of cheerful colors. But if you look closely, there's a couple things that are kind of disconcerting. So he has a way of just really um, being able to create a composition that is healing for him. Um, but for the audience, it can captivate them and make it them look a little deeper as to what's going on. What I enjoy about his work as well is he also created uh, his images out of discarded things. He would go to half price books. He'd find his images in um, potentially anything that was discarded. Um, he, he would just create many, many layers. And um, this was a way of him just creating a language that would help him um, get through his his situation and he's been creating for some time now. Okay, and this last artist, his name is Derek Gores. This was entitled Straight to Your Heart. It's been created in 2015. This artist is what I consider he's just a, a master of collage. Um, and I say that because he's able to put these images in a in a very, very detailed multi-layered composition and create very nice uh, portraits. Um, he was um, also known as a recycling artist. He would take pieces of technology when that, like bits and pieces of at the time we had, you know, floppy disks or just different parts of technology and incorporate them in his work. He would also incorporate like song lyrics, maps, all kinds of really cool things and create a photo realistic um, portrait. Now, what I love about his work is if you look at it um, far away, you can see it's a really nice image of a, fem of a, fe a female looking at you. And the gaze kind of draws you into the piece. And as you get closer to the piece, you'll see that it's comprised of so many different elements. And there's also a lot of faces in there as well. And if you look at them, it kind of draws your eyes throughout the piece. But this is just an example of how far you can go with art collage making. Okay, so now is the time to create. So as you create your work, I would encourage you to think about how can you grow your connection with art. Uh, if, if the theme of healing speaks to you, really take the time and reflect on either what you'd like to convey, what you'd like the composition to look like, what, what emotion you wanna work through, or if there's a certain experience you kind of wanna just depict whether it's getting that emotion associated with it or the hurt that you feel through it. However, there's no wrong or there's no wrong or right way to do this. So just um, relax, explore. You can do take your time and do it. You can collage. You can kind of take pieces off and reposition them. So one um, one instruction I'll, I'll or recommendation I'll give you is as you put them on your space, you can your images. You can lay them out in a composition, but before you glue them down, just make sure that you're you're ready and you want to commit to that. The Mod Podge allows you to be a little bit free with moving things around, but eventually you're going to want to go ahead and 
uh, commit to it. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know at the end of this presentation. I'll provide you with all my contact information. You can do a couple things. You can pause the video right now and you can take your time and start creating, or you can just go through this and then create it on your own um, at the end. But either way, I am, I am, my con contact information will be there for you if you have any questions. I would also encourage you to share your artwork. I would love to see your completed work. Um, it really encourages me, motivates me, and inspires. Um, it's just inspiring that you're gonna give this a try. So again, my email will be at the end of the presentation. Feel free to send me an, an, your finished image. Um, I would just love to see it and, and collaborate with each other. And again, um, please feel free to go ahead and send any questions. I'd be happy to help you. Okay, so this is just a little bit more about me. Um, I, I am a oil painter. I paint animal and nature portraits. Um, most recently, um, I have actually worked at a, a counseling center. I work at a counseling center where we provide counseling services to nonprofit organizations throughout the DFW area. And working alongside clinicians and our clients, that's really informed my artwork. So my, my most recent paintings have been dealing with mental health themes, but utilizing animal and nature elements. So it kind of collage informs this. So collage, some people, some artists use it to create their sketch, to create, get their uh, creative ideas flowing before they create a painting. But as we mentioned, art collage is it's, it's an art form in its own right. Um, collage has helped me work through many um, challenging feelings, challenging experiences. Um, and you can even use it. One thing that I'd highly recommend is if you wanna use the theme of healing, for example, you can create a collage just utilizing colors that you like, pictures that bring you peace, just different things that you're drawn to, whether it's color, texture, words that evoke healing, that, that resonate, resonate um, healing to you. And what you can do is it doesn't have to, you don't have to work through anything if you choose not to, but if you, if that end composition brings you peace, and gives you joy, you can put that in a room that you spend a lot of time in and just look at it and reflect on it. Um, and that can be healing in itself. The other thing I'll recommend is when you work on your collage on your own, make sure your space is conducive to creativity. So I, when I work, I like to put music on. I sometimes light a candle and I just ask my family, my dog will come in and that's fine, but I'd, I'd like to have some uninterrupted time to work on it because this is a way to have some, some private time with yourself and really um, express yourself. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I really appreciate the time um, and the opportunity to teach you today. And I really hope that this has uh, been helpful and that you can create a um, art collage making practice that will help you in your everyday life. All of the images I used, all of the references are right here. Um, you can go on to these, these links and learn more about the artist, learn more about collage making. So I just, just provided this for your reference. And I just wanna say thanks. Thanks again. Thanks for a great um, having this opportunity to encourage you to create and take time for yourself. And I really hope you get something out of it. Have a great day. Funding provided by National Endowment for the Arts Creative Forces.